not so hot. She's hot enough to replace you whenever I choose. Coke is the biggest taste you have ever found. Coke is it, the one that never lets you down. Coke is it. The key to faking out the parents is the clammy hands. It's a good non-specific symptom. I'm a big believer in it. Gummy bears bouncing here and there and everywhere. To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. It's your McDonald's Big Mac. You've got to taste it to believe it, you know what I mean? There's nothing scary to watch on TV, dude. <sighs> That's what you think. I didn't want to show you this before, because your parents would totally freak out, but... I stole this from my dad's room. No way, this is rated R! No doy, dude. We, we can't watch this, my mom's gonna have my head! Of course we can, it's Halloween, you so said there's nothing to watch. Besides, we're both 13. You're 12, I'm 13. 12 and a half, give me that. Wait, 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 I'm not too sure about this. Stop being a baby, okay? This is going to be bad. What's happening, guys? This is... Halloween, this is Halloween. No! Well, I mean it is. But also, this is Alien Isolation. The raddest alien game to come out in recent years. Not that there was much competition. Think back to the 80s where you were watching Inspector Gadget reruns on Saturday morning, eating Lunchables, wearing... Par parachute pants. And if you weren't alive in the 80s, then think back to when you were a fetus or something, I guess. Not only were these the days of Full House and Capri Sun, this was the golden age where a lot of legendary movie franchises started. I'm talking Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, Terminator, Ghostbusters, Die Hard, Batman, and one of my favorite movies of all time, The Princess Bride. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. But my favorite franchise to come from this decade is none other than the Alien Trilogy. Yep, Alien, Aliens, and Alien Resurrection. One of the best trilogies of movies ever made. Yep, just those three. That, that was all of them. Just, there were, there were no other movies. I, I, I definitely, definitely do not remember any other Alien movies. Unless you're talking about Alien Covenant or Prometheus. Five movies. Just five, not six, just just five. I love the Alien movies. There's just something so amazing about old MS-DOS computers and high-tech spaceships and that hauntingly, horrifyingly perfect atmosphere. And most importantly, the Alien itself. And none of the movies quite captured how horrifyingly beautiful H.R. Geiger's creature was than the original film itself. And that's where Alien Isolation comes in. It's a survival horror game that takes place after the first movie and before the second. A pre-sequel, if you will. And it was designed to give off the same dread and level of detail the first movie had. The other Alien movies became more action than horror down the line, so I'm glad the developers decided to go off the template from the original movie. But enough backstory and 80s nostalgia. It's time to get into the game. Like a xenomorph fetus getting into an unsuspecting stomach. The food ain't that bad, baby. <laughs> The game begins with Ellen Ripley's daughter Amanda just being an all-around respectful girl. This dude tells Amanda that a salvage team found the ship log of the Nostromo, the same ship her mom was lost in. So naturally, she agrees to come along for some closure. The only thing about this that doesn't make sense is Ripley has a daughter? This chick? Get away from her, you- In the movie, she never mentions her, and even after she wakes up from a 60-year hypersleep, she's never like, where's my daughter? But making the main character Ripley's daughter does make the game feel more tied to the movies, so whatevs. After that short scene, the game quickly throws you into gameplay. The beginning of the game is just this huge throwback to the movie. The ship Amanda wakes up in is a replica of the Nostromo from the movie. It's details like this that are scattered throughout the entire game that really makes it feel like you're playing through the movies. It's awesome. After getting separated from her crew while boarding the scavenger ship, Amanda quickly realizes that not everything is all groovy on the love boat. She then meets Axel, a kind-hearted but skeptical- oh, oh wait, no, he's dead. He is dead. Rest in peace, Axel.
See, even though the alien is obviously the main threat of the game, there are also other humans you have to watch out for because even though you're obviously not an alien, these guys apparently can't tell the difference. But what scared me the most during my playthrough wasn't the alien or the humans. It was the androids. These guys are terrifying. They patrol around and if they see you, they just walk towards you at a brisk pace, emotionless. It's pretty unsettling. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The game looks really good. Everything is so clean, the fire and lighting effects are top notch, and the voice acting is just stellar. All of it really adds up and just sucks you into this world. We'll return after these messages. To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. It's your McDonald's Big Mac. You've got to taste it to believe it, you know what I mean? To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. To all beef patties, cheese, to me, uh, what was it again? To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. Let me say a few words about McDonald's Big Mac. It's a, it's, it's... To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. To all beef patties, cheese, tomato sauce, lettuce, cheese... No, I said cheese. Oh, fudge. Uh... To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. To all beef patties... To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. You deserve a break today at McDonald's. Where your dollar gets a break every day. The atmosphere of Alien Isolation is the best part about it. Not only does everything look like it's ripped straight out of the movie, it also perfectly gives that feeling of hopelessness. The darkness, the quiet, the overturned tables and ripped apart floors everywhere, the green and red hues covering it all, it's all just so creepy. This game is polished so well with so many little details that just immerse you. Like how you can always see your hands when you interact with things. You might not think that's a big deal, but you'd be surprised at the amount of first person games that omit this detail. What will be the most immersive thing about Alien Isolation is its use of the PS4 controller. See, in the game you have this motion tracker, and whenever there's something around you, it beeps. And when it beeps, the light on the back of the controller flashes to match, as well as all the sounds from the motion tracker going through the speaker on the remote itself. It might sound kinda lame, but trust me, it's really cool. But all this is just fluff. The main attraction is the alien itself. And boy howdy does he look cool. The alien is almost completely randomized in this game. So besides a small handful of choreographed moments, everything the alien does is random. And that just makes it that much more terrifying. He could be in the same rooms, he could be gone for a little bit, he could come from the ceiling right on top of you, or just be lurking in the hallway right in front of you. It's super unsettling. Luckily, there are plenty of desks, tables, and lockers to hide in everywhere. And trust me, you will have to hide because you can't kill this thing. The only thing that can keep him at bay is the flamethrower, which you get about three-fourths through the game. At first I didn't like the flamethrower because I thought it took all the fear out of the alien segments, and it did. But once I realized the fuel for the flamethrower was few and far in between, I was reminded at how unforgiving the game can be. Even though the game can be brutal, it still offers leniency in the form of save stations. The only way to save your progress in Alien Isolation is by finding these old payphone looking save stations. And they are everywhere. Almost like the game thought I'd throw a fit if I had to replay anything once I died. But the game kind of makes up for it by letting you die while you save. That's right, even when you're waiting to save the game, you can get stabbed through the chest by our parasite friend. Alien Isolation is an amazing game, and one of my favorites. I couldn't find much wrong with it aside from it being a little easy at times, but there are much harder modes than the one I played, so that probably fixes it. I will however also say that this is one of those games where the end drones on forever. I won't spoil anything, but I thought the game was over when I had almost 6 hours left. With such strong ties to the movies through the atmosphere, story, and even soundtrack ripped straight from the first film, this game is all an Alien fan could ever want. In fact, now I want to go watch those movies again. They all still hold up today. 
yeah, they were they were all really good. I I don't remember a single bad one. Not none of them were bad. They were all good. All good. Just, there wasn't ever a one that was bad at all. Nope. Can't 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 recall any anyone like that. Nope. Alien Isolation is a joy to play. I had a blast from start to finish. It's not your typical run-in-the-mill, scary, ghost-filled, zombie, vampire horror game, but it still scratched my spooky itch. You can actually get the game on the PSN store for five bucks and $11 gets you all of the DLC for the game. Even if you don't have a PS4, the game is still pretty cheap on most other consoles. If you're looking for a scary game, I'd recommend Alien Isolation 100% this Halloween. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And as always, please consider subscribing to my channel, The Toka Show, and giving that bell a ding a ling ling so you are notified for whenever my new videos come out, which, by the way, is every Tuesday and Saturday. Also, follow my Twitter, because why not? You're still here? It's over. Go home.